Welcome back. Back in the shop again working on the Mustang. Project this time is to try and get a roof rack on the Mustang so I can cart around slicks and shelters and fuel jugs and whatever else won't fit in the car going down the road. All right, so the roof rack that we got is a uh, sport rack. And it's actually uh, SR1003 is the part number. I'll put a link somewhere in the video description if you're interested in a roof rack for your Fox Body Mustang. So first thing we gotta do is uh, adjust the width of these things. And when you read the instructions, um, it tells you to set it for 27. So we gotta adjust that on both of these things. Um, I've kind of already put them on the car uh, to see how well they're going to fit the roof and actually tweaked both of these brackets a little bit so it follows the curvature of the roof um, a little bit better so on this one you can kind of see it's uh, it's pretty tweaked um, this one um, not quite as much so just stuck it in the vise and, and bent it down a little bit um, the goal is to uh, be able to strap the tires down um, using these things and these are uh, for a e-track so we've got e-track brackets that will clip right onto this thing well it would fit better if I actually unpackaged it but you get the idea uh, so we've got to drill some holes um, put these things in the right place uh, for each tire and then uh, I also want to um, to try and make it easier to put the roof rack on and remove it in case I want to do that on a daily basis at the racetrack. The car might look silly going down the racetrack with the roof rack on it, but uh, whatever. Um, I'm looking at adding uh, a couple of extra members here to tie both the front and rear bars together. Uh, so these are aluminum. So I bought some aluminum and then uh, some uh, flat. So we'll just cut out and cap these ends. And uh, because I can't exactly uh, weld a, um, a steel nut onto the, uh, onto the aluminum, we'll use uh, a rivnut. And again, figure out the spacing that I want, that I'm happy with so the tires can drop in uh, here. We don't want them too far uh, apart where the tires you know, can drop down and, and hit the roof on the car. And we don't want them too close together uh, to where the tires aren't going to be stable. So I think we're going to be somewhere around 17 to 18 inches, something like that. Uh, so we'll cut a pair of these things, uh, drill some extra holes, again, weld the caps on the end, put some rivnuts nuts in there, and then put it all together into one uh, big unit. Um, got some bolts already. Uh, for the e-track, so uh, these come with nice little square holes, so we've got some carriage bolts that'll fit in there, give us a nice clean look, and nice and aerodynamic uh, too. Uh, so that's the plan. So let's get these things uh, kind of fitted up. Uh, well, let's get them to the 27 inches, fit them up to the car, and see how uh, uh, everything goes. All right, so we got the rear one on and put it put as far back as I can go. Um, and we're gonna put the forward on, I don't know, somewhere in, in about there. And then we'll measure it up and see how it looks. Try and do this without scratching paint. Okay, and let's see where we are there. Uh, that's about 12 and a half inches between the two, so I think we can do a bit better. Maybe something like that. That's 15. I'm not sure if I want to push it any more further forward. Let's see what 15 looks like on the other side. Okay, so that's 15. Double check here again. That's 15. And let's see how a 26 inch tire looks like on that. Okay, so one lightweight analog for a 26 inch tire. And yeah, you know what? I might want to try and go about another inch, I think. Let's try that. So we'll go to like 16. Oh, 
Well, let's try 17. Looks like we're still in a decently flat section. All right, 17 looks pretty good. We'll see how our tire likes that. Uh, that's getting about as close to the roof as uh, I think I want to get. Actually, that's a little bit too close. So, okay, we'll go back to 16 and uh, we'll build it based on that spacing. Okay, we'll snug up both sides a little bit at a time. Try and get it tight enough that it's not going to move around. And at the same time, we don't want to over tighten it to where it's putting dents in my roof. So that actually tightened up really nicely on this side. I give it a bit more on the passenger side. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so um, we're gonna cut 16 inch aluminum pieces. We're gonna drill some holes. Um, actually, let's throw the tires on there first. Figure out where we need to put our brackets for the uh, E-Track clamps. Oh yeah, another inch there, and we would have been into the roof with the tire. Okay, and luckily, we've got a nice little sport rack logo right in the middle. So that gives us a center location. We'll just have a look from the front and see How that looks. Okay, that looks like we are bang in the middle. So, get out our silver sharpie and let's figure out where our bracket needs to go. So it looks like right about there. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll measure up the other ones from the center so that we're symmetric on both sides. And then we'll copy the measurements from the front rack to the rear rack uh, and drill those holes, get these things mounted up. Um, the other thing we need to figure out is where we want to put our cross pieces. So obviously they need to be out far enough that the tires aren't going to run into them. Uh, but we don't want them um, out too far either because we want them to try and stiffen the whole thing up. So let's get one of those pipes. Uh, so something, yeah, right around lucky seven. Okay, so... The number seven on here looks like a nice place to drill a hole and to put in my uh, extra reinforcement tubes. Okay, so we'll get these things off, get them to the drill press, put some holes in them. Uh, we're gonna take a hole saw and try and cut out some nice little round plugs for the ends of the tube here. Uh, TIG weld those on and yeah, put our rivnets in and probably end up painting this black. Um, we'll see, if it turns out decent, maybe I'll leave it shiny silver, but kind of got the black theme happening here, so probably gonna end up painting the black. So I noticed there's a, um, a little bit of curvature in the roof. So when we've got the front and the rear rack both clamped in place, um, it's not perfectly flat. 
So when I cut the uh, aluminum tubing, uh, I'm just going to keep in mind that little bit of angle that I need to put on the one end there so that everything bolts together in the right orientation so that it will pop right back onto the roof um, without stressing things in a different direction because, again, I don't want to put any dents in the, in the roof. caps made so now it's just a matter of uh, welding them onto the ends of the tubes and then once we've got them on the ends of the tubes then I'll go back and redrill the holes and put the rib nuts in and of course we're going to paint everything black in the end. So let's hit the welding bench. We got all four of our caps welded onto our tubes. I went and cleaned up the welds a little bit on the grinder because, well, I got shaky hands because of my health problems. So, yes, I'm a grinder. I'm not a welder. Uh, anyway, they're still hot, which is why I'm handling them with the big thick gloves. We're going to uh, drill them out to the right size, put the rivnuts in, paint them black, drill the holes we need to drill into the roof racks, bolt everything together, mount our tires, and whatever else, call it done. So let's get to drilling. If you're not familiar with riv nuts, it's basically like a pop rivet, except it's threaded uh, inside. So if we take our quarter inch bolt, uh, we can thread the thing in. So kind of like a pop rivet gun, we're gonna thread on our rivet, we're going to put it into the hole uh, and then we're going to expand it and then unthread it after. So for the quarter inch coarse thread bolts that I want to use, uh, these riv nuts require a 2364 hole. So that's what we need to drill. Got our tube in the vise with our soft jaw because we don't want to waffleize our soft aluminum tube and our 2364 drill bit, low speed, and here we go. Oh, I love drilling soft aluminum. It's so much more friendly than steel. Check our riv nut, slides in just beautifully. Now, these aren't flush riv nuts, I've just noticed. So that's going to hang out a little bit. Hmm. Might want to countersink these just to try and get that head 
of that rivnut flush. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna countersink them. I said that I was gonna countersink, but I decided to counter bore instead. So the big flange on the rivet here is just slightly smaller than a half an inch. So we're gonna counter bore with a half an inch, just deep enough that the head on that rivet's gonna end up being flush. We're going to try it. Oh, just a little bit more. And that's about perfect there. Okay, so we got our threaded insert. We just spin it onto the tool, jam the tool in there, and squeeze. Just like that. And then unthread our tool. And we've got a beautiful flush rivnut. Using a step bit, we want to know which step to stop at. Uh, so I'm just going to put a little piece of masking tape around the next step that I don't want to go to. So I've got a nice visual on how deep I want to go to get the right hole size that I want. loosely in place and then we'll put our intermediate bars in tighten them down and then tighten the front rack now I have to remember which side is flat and which side had the angle on it which I think went that way if I remember right. Wouldn't hurt to label things, Ed. Let's just screw this in and see how square it is when it's tightened down and then I'll know for sure. Yeah, that's got a pretty good eccentric on it. I'd say that goes to the back. Oh yeah, that's much better. Oh, that's just beautiful. Every once in a while, I do something right. This might be one of those rare instances. But we're not done yet, so wish me luck. All right. We like that. these boys on here get them centered look at that door even closes and fits 
that's actually pretty close. And now, with the aid of uh, a ladder, maybe, um, let's get the straps on and see how that works out. We are tightened down, but still kind of shaky in this direction. So I think what I'm going to do is run a big long threaded rod through the wheels and clamp both wheels together so they can't uh, shake side to side. But otherwise, this is going to work. All right, we got our threaded rod uh, cut and shortened. We got a nice little hole drilled in the end. We got a nut welded on the other end. So we're gonna push this through from the other end. Like that. Nice fat washer. Nut. And nice. Okay, and we've got our car cover uh, cable wrapped around through the tires, um, around through the rack, and we're going to terminate it by going through the bolt like that and try and keep it from rubbing on the paint. So there we are. We've got our roof rack in place. We've got our reinforcing tie bars. We've got our brackets for our E-track tie downs. We've got our threaded rod to bolt everything together nice and stiff and we've got our extra little theft prevention oh yeah and we've got our locking caps on the sport rack uh, too so at this point we'll go for a drive and see what happens uh, see if the tires are still in the same place when I get back as, uh, as when I left All right, we're back from the road. Uh, took a, uh, I don't know, 10 mile drive. Um, tires are still there. Everything's still tight. So I think we've got a solution. So there you go. If you've got an old style Fox body and you need a roof rack, this is the one that you want. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Today, we're going to put a roof on the Fox body. And um, it's got a roof. And hopefully you can hear me. And hopefully I'm not doing that too much. If you're not familiar with rib nuts, basically let's make some holes.
Works better if you plug it in. Okay, so using a step drip, step bit, bit, bit. Using a step bit. And how about that? I drilled all the holes the wrong size. So I get to go back and do that all again. Because I thought these were th uh, quarter inch bolts and they're actually 5 16 bolts. Dang it. And now this battery's dead. Oh, and that would be the live streaming on Bang Shift starting. I wonder what YouTube's policy is on copyright if you've got YouTube playing in the background.